give me 30 seconds to help you decide your eternity. Are you confident that if you die tonight that you're going to go to heaven? I really want you to pause and think about that question. You see, there can be no doubt in your mind. None. Don't rush and scroll away. If you feel the urge to scroll, resist the devil and he will flee. I'm here to help you decide a choice that will transform this life and set up the next one in eternity. There isn't a more important decision in your life than this because eternity lasts forever. And in the next few minutes, I want you to stick around and learn about how you guarantee your place in heaven. You're not the only one in this situation. Stick around for more because I'm going to cut right to the chase. Jesus Christ loves you. Yes, you, right where you're at. He loves you in spite of all the mistakes you've made. He loves you regardless of your sins, your past, or anything that might be shaming you right now. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Everyone sins. I've sinned, and I will sin again at some point in the future. And I don't want to sin, but my flesh is weak, and I fall short from time to time, and I make mistakes, and I regret them. But there's a difference that you may not know of. When I sin, the blood of Jesus covers them, meaning that even though I fall short of God's standard, I'm redeemed. I'm safe from all forms of condemnation, and I'm not going to taste the fires of hell. Here's the key. Listen to this. It's not anything that I did or could ever do. It was all because of Jesus. Getting into heaven is nothing like what you may have heard. Your Sunday school teacher may have told you it's about works, doing good deeds. Maybe a parent or a friend said it was about being a good person. None of that's true. All the other religions of the world requires you to do something. Christianity stands apart because it's different. Jesus did all the work for you. He came to earth, died a sinner's death, even though he did not sin. He did that because he had you in his mind. He loves you that much. You need to understand why this happened. Jesus's father wanted a family. Jesus wanted you. But love comes with a requirement. It must be freely given. It can't be forced. The moment God gave people free will, they could choose to love him or reject him. And that's exactly what happened. And it even gets stranger. Mankind fell into sin, forever separating themselves from being in the presence of God. No one could fix it. Elon Musk couldn't buy his way into heaven. You can't be born with a special gift that allows you to see Jesus. Everyone God created was totally lost because no one rich poor, smart, or born into royalty could be fix the brokenness of sin. Jesus not only broke the curse of sin, he rose three days later. That's not even the craziest part. He testified and walked the earth for 40 days, showing himself to a myriad of people, proving that he's the son of God. He kept doing more miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, saving the lost. He proved that he was the son of God through his words, actions, and testimony. Stick around because the story is just getting good. Jesus ascended into heaven with a promise. Anyone that accepts him as Savior and Lord and believes in their heart, not only will they be saved, they'll be adopted into the kingdom of God. And this is where it gets good. When God adopts you as a child in his kingdom, you're no longer an orphan. You're no longer powerless in this life. You are seated on the same seat that Jesus has right next to the Father. That's a powerful affirmation. It's a truth spoken directly into your soul. You're safe. You're consecrated. Here's the truth. You belong. There's no more emptiness, shame, or guilt. There is no condemnation, worry, or anxiety. It's about getting closer to Jesus as he gets more and more of you. It's really that simple. It's not complicated. There's no rituals required. It's all about two things, and they're so easy. First, you must make a public declaration that Jesus is Lord. You don't have to do it in front of people. In fact, you can do it in your prayer closet all by yourself. God sees you regardless. Second, you must believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Then you'll be saved. It's both an action 
and a reaction, a statement and a feeling. It's really that simple. Nothing more, nothing less. Let me walk you through a simple prayer. Stick around for this part because this is the part that will change your life forever. Afterwards, I'm going to explain a few things to get you started on your new journey. So stick around for the rest of the video. We're almost done. Go ahead and bow your head and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I have sinned. Forgive me of all my mistakes, both known and unknown, intentional and unintentional. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I accept him into my heart today. I believe in my heart that he's alive, seated right next to you, watching and loving me. Please come into my heart. I pray that I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come and live inside of me. From this day forward, I renounce all my sins. I will only follow you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. You're now counted in the kingdom of God. In the comments, go ahead and type, I am saved. Let's all celebrate your bold affirmation for God because now we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. These are exciting times indeed. Let me give you three key steps to help you on your journey. Number one, in the description below, there's a link to a free ebook to help you on your journey. It will guide you step-by-step step on how to walk out this amazing journey with Jesus Christ. Don't hesitate to get it. It will be a great resource to get you going. Number two, find a local church that's Bible-based. Believe it or not, there are many churches that aren't. In fact, most don't follow the whole Bible. Don't go to a church that doesn't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit or has adopted some weird doctrines. Ultimately, you can tell if this church is biblical or not based upon their key tenets or beliefs. Most churches post them on their website, and if they believe in the Trinity and the Holy Spirit power, you can put them on your list to check them out. And number three, don't let the people in your life drag you back into the old way of living. Now hear me on this one because this may be the most difficult one to navigate. You're a new creation. You're born again. An old person is dead and you have the fullness of the Holy Spirit inside of you. There's no such thing as the junior Holy Spirit. People in your life will try to drag you back into sin. They will shame you, criticize you, maybe even cut you out of their lives. It can happen with family, friends, coworkers, schoolmates, and more. Don't return to the circles that got you in trouble. Don't go to the places that you should no longer be at. Keep your mind clear of the evil and sin of the world. It's important that what you say and look at can really impact your life. Keep what you look at holy. It's so important. Keep what you say to be positive and encouraging. There's a lot to learn here, and this channel covers a ton of that information. I want to encourage you to watch some of the other videos on this channel. My testimony is a powerful one, and it'll be in the description below. We have resources on our website and other videos that you can watch to further your walk with Jesus Christ. It's key to understand how God sees you. Your identity in Christ is so important because it will unravel the lies people have spoken into your life and allow you to be totally free and walk out the life God planned for you. You're counted among the kingdom of God. That means you have certain rights and blessings that are now on their way. They include physical healing, full mental and emotional healing. There are financial principles around kingdom prosperity that belong to you. Don't allow anyone that says that you can't be healed, that you can't be forgiven, or that you can't thrive financially. Those are all lies to keep you in bondage and away from the perfect will of God. I'm so excited you're here. May God bless you on this amazing journey.